Hi Year 6 and welcome to this week's spelling lesson. Um, I'm going to start off by um, showing you this week's spelling shed leaderboard as it stands as I record this. So well done to 6H, they are well in the lead at the moment. 6M um, closely behind, we've got 6R following them and 6G have got a little bit of catching up to do so get onto spelling sheds this week and see if you can catch them up. Well done to the individuals on the leaderboard this week from Year 6. We've got Billy Y in top place, followed by Jaden H and Freya M. So well done to those children. See if you can get on there next week. Now let's start off with revising spelling adjectives to describe settings that you did with Mrs Green last week. So have a look at the spellings on here. You've got two options. Can you decide which one is the correct spelling and circle or underline that one? So we've got tranquil, majestic, unsightly, regal, magnificent, picturesque, spectacular, noiseless and sinister. Pause the video now and have a go. Welcome back. Hopefully you've got them all right. Let's have a look. We've got tranquil with a Q-U. We've got majestic with a J. Unsightly. Um, with an L-Y at the end. We've got Regal with A-L at the end. Magnificent with the C making the sound. Picturesque um, with a C-T making the K sound. We've got Spectacular with an A-R at the end. Noiseless with an E before the L. And Sinister with an E-R at the end. Um, give yourself a mark out of nine and hopefully you got them all right. Let's check that we can use some of these adjectives to describe some settings uh, because of course we need to be able to choose the most appropriate adjective um, for each sentence. So when I want to read I like to find a space. Certainly the streets were crowded with people Christmas shopping. The voice on the end of the phone warned me to stay away. I'd like you to select the most appropriate adjective for each sentence. Pause the video now. Welcome back. This is what I'd have gone for. I like to find a tranquil space. Suddenly the streets were bustling and the sinister voice on the end of the phone. Okay, let's have a look at this week's learning objectives. So, we are learning to spell vocabulary to describe feelings. Why do this, you might ask? Now, being able to describe a character's feelings accurately can help a reader to understand a character in more depth. And actually, in life, it's really useful to have a good vocabulary to describe our own feelings. We're not just sad or happy or angry. There's lots of other emotions that we feel and it's really useful to be able to describe them to other people and to be able to understand what those emotions are um, for other people so that we have um, hopefully a greater empathy for others. So your vocabulary today, a feeling is an emotional state or reaction to something and empathy which is the ability to understand and share the feelings of others. So let's have a look at some sentences from Wanda. I'd like you to identify the vocabulary that describes feelings and see if you can work out whose feelings are being described just from these sentences. So number one, I was so nervous that the butterflies in my stomach were more like pigeons flying around my insides. Number two, when I looked up at her, I could tell she was completely shocked. Number three, I pretended not to be at all upset while we talked, though I could feel my face getting hot, my smile being fake. So, have a go. Can you identify the vocabulary to describe feelings? And can you work out whose feelings are being described? Pause the video now. Welcome back. So, in the first one, um, the vocabulary to describe the feeling was nervous um, 
and that was orgy. He was nervous before going to school. The second sentence, the vocabulary to describe the feeling was shocked and that was Augie's mum. And then the third one, the vocabulary was upset and that quote was by Via. So we can see that all three of the words in bold are adjectives. Most of the vocabulary we use to describe feelings are adjectives, descriptive words. So let's have a look at this week's Year 6 spelling words and we need to make sure we can pronounce them properly. So I'm going to read them out. First of all, we have got euphoric, delighted, despondent, incensed, terrified, apprehensive, jittery, optimistic, positive, and sanguine. Maybe you'd like to pause the video and have a go and make sure you can pronounce them all properly. Okay, now of course, there's no point knowing a word if you don't know what it means. So let's make sure we understand what each of our spelling words mean this week. So on the left, you've got five of this week's spelling words. And on the right, we've got four definitions. These are the words I think you might have heard before. So let's see if you can match the words to the correct meaning. I'll give you a clue. Two of the words on the left match to one of the definitions on the right. They are synonyms. Pause the video and have a go. Welcome back. Okay, so I decided that delighted means very pleased. Terrified means greatly afraid. Apprehensive means anxious or fearful that something bad is going to happen. And finally, optimistic and positive both mean full of hope and confidence. Those two are synonyms. Did you agree? Now, the remaining five words on your spelling list this week are a little bit more unusual and you may not have heard of all of them. So I have been very kind to you and done the hard work for you and found some definitions. So, the word euphoric means feeling intense excitement and happiness. Really, really happy. Despondent means in low spirits from loss of hope or courage. So feeling very hopeless. Incensed means extremely angry, furious even. Jittery means nervous or unable to relax. And sanguine means cheerfully optimistic or positive, especially in a bad situation. So, let's check we understand all of the words now. Have a look at the spellings on the left and see if you can match them to a synonym on the right. Remember that a synonym is a word that has a similar meaning. They might not match exactly, but see how you get on. Pause the video now. Welcome back. Okay, so I think that euphoric means joyful. You could have put happy, uh, but I think joyful would have been the best choice because delighted also means happy or joyful, but maybe delighted or happy, slightly less happy than euphoric, which is very happy or joyful. Then despondent, which means disheartened. Incensed, which matched with enraged. Terrified, which matched with petrified. Apprehensive and jittery, I think are fairly similar and could match with either anxious or nervous or possibly scared. Then we had optimistic, positive and sanguine, which all mean fairly similar things and could have matched with confident or hopeful. Um, so some 
um, ambiguity between your answers there and you could have matched a few of them slightly differently. Right then, let's see if we can practice using some of these um, vocabulary words to describe feelings. So, you've got the words on the right there and you've got some sentences on the left. And I want you to really think about which word would fit each sentence the best. So, Augie felt that no one would want to be his friend. On the way to see Mr Tushman, Mum was clearly as, as Augie was. Via would have been if she had known what Julian had said to Augie. Now that Augie had met Jack and Summer, he felt much more and about school. Obviously, it really helps to know the text Wonder to have a go at this. So if you need to catch up, you might want to pause the video and go and catch up on the playlist with the Wonder chapters first. If you're up to date, well done. It's going to be much easier. Can you figure out which feeling fits which sentence? best. Pause the video, have a go. Welcome back. So I decided that the first one had to really be terrified or he felt terrified that no one would want to be his friend. I think number two fits best as apprehensive. On the way to see Mr Tushman, mum was clearly as apprehensive as Augie was. You could have also had jittery because they both mean nervous. Number three, Via would have been incensed if she had known what Julian had said to Augie. I think that one had to be the best one there. Really, really angry. And the last one, now that Augie had met Jack and Summer, he felt much more optimistic and positive about school. You could have had those the other way around or even put in sanguine um, to show that um, those are all synonyms and you could have chosen any of those to fit the last sentence. Okay, your turn now, it's your chili challenges. So, chili one, practice the spelling words using a range of strategies, rainbow writing, segmenting, pyramid writing, whatever works for you. Chili two, do chili one, make sure you practice your spellings, and also you could write a glossary um, of all of the spelling words. So, Write them in alphabetical order and give a definition of each. Chili three. Write the spelling words into your own sentences to describe the feelings of different characters in wonder. We'd love to see any spelling work sent through to us at the year six email address at the top of the screen. And you can also go on to Spelling Shed to practice this week's um, words. Who knows, maybe somebody else will be on the leaderboard next week. Good luck and enjoy your spelling practice this week.